Yeah, hi everyone. My name is, uh, oh, I gotta check my notes, um, Kevin Ring. Everybody <laughs> ever have a presentation brain? Like, you just cannot remember the simplest things when you get up here. Anyway, I'll try not to be there, but look, I'm, I'm the lead developer uh, on, C on C the Cesium Native Runtimes team. Um, we're the team that's responsible for Cesium for Unreal, uh, Cesium for Unity, and also a thing called Cesium Native that sort of un underlies those two, plus uh, uh, some other sort of uh, native C++ integrations that we do. Uh, I'm going to give you a brief tour of what's new, um, what's exciting in Cesium for Unreal. Um, maybe uh, you first took a look at Cesium for Unreal back when we first released it a few years ago now. Or maybe you use it every day and um, you just aren't sure if you're taking advantage of all, all that's new and, and cool. And we're also going to talk a little bit about um, what's coming up next. So if you've never heard of Cesium for Unreal, or you don't know what it does, uh, you're probably in the wrong room. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to share lots of screenshots. I'll hopefully give you a sense of what it's all about. Um, but just to give you a little bit of context here at the start, um, Cesium for Unreal, it's a plugin for Unreal Engine, uh, it's a, which is a popular game engine for uh, building video games and, and other graphically impressive interactive experiences. Um, so after we install the plugin from, from the Epic Games Fab, all we have to do is enable it in our project by taking the highlighted box that you see here. And then we can use the Cesium panel to sign into Cesium Ion. And from there, with just two clicks, we can add a realistic lighting model um, and Google Photorealistic 3D tiles, which is this 3D model of the real world. Um, this is an absolutely enormous data set. Um, it's easily measured in millions of gigabytes. And wherever we go in the world, um, the necessary context for the current view is streamed into the application on the fly. And from there, we can bring to bear the, the many uh, graphics and interactivity tools that Unreal Engine uh, provides us to create an amazing experience around this real world, real world context. Um, the plugin is free and open source, which I think is, is pretty cool. Um, and, and so that's, that's the core. That's what Cesium for Unreal is fundamentally, fundamentally all about. That's what it's done since the 1.0 days. But it hasn't stood still since. So here's a timeline of Cesium for Unreal. Um, we started development in mid-2020. Um, with, with generous support from an Epic Mega Games or an Epic Games Mega Grant, uh, the first public public release was at the end of uh, twenty, sorry, at the end of March 2020. And since then, we've released a new version at least once every month. Um, I actually looked at the GitHub releases page, and there's a little counter that's the number of releases you've done uh, as I was making the slide, and I was I was actually shocked to see that that number just hit triple digits. So we're, we've over 100 releases in that time. Um, some of the major new features and milestones um, are, are shown on the timeline. And then at the end in green um, are some of the new features that we're planning for the future, which we'll talk about more later. And throughout the entire history, we've incrementally improved performance. Despite having more features, the latest versions of CCM for Unreal load faster, they take less time each render frame, and they use far less memory than the original version 1.0 did back in 2021. So let's take a look, closer look at some of these features that we've added since version one um, that enable users to build better games, simulations, and experiences. And one of the earliest and, uh, and most important, I think, is what we call cartographic polygons. So this is the idea that we can interactively or programmatically define a polygon. Um, in the screenshot, it's just a square. I don't know how well you can see that up there. Hopefully it's okay. But there's a white outline, um, which is the boundary of our polygon. Um, but you can even do concave polygons. And then we can clip out that polygon, clip that polygon out of the tile set, or the tile set is usually some base model of the world, like the Google Photorealistic 3D tiles. And once there's a suitable hole in the world, we can fill it with something else. Um, perhaps a more detailed model of a city is shown here, or we can remove a building to replace it with the planned new building that will go in its place. So this is all integrated with Unreal's material system. So in addition to simply removing uh, the area inside the polygon, we can also apply sort of arbitrary effects. Uh, so here's an example of using a custom material to render water inside a cartographic polygon. Um, our friend Stephen Phillips uh, from Epic, um, I don't know who, who saw his presentation yesterday, um, but it was, it was really cool. So he showed off this and a bunch of other uh, really neat stuff that he's doing in Unreal Engine. Um, but he, he's also written a tutorial where you can uh, use how to create a blueprint to automatically fill out a cartographic polygon with some sort of blank slate, you know, nice blank green place that you can put some, some other content into. 
Another related feature is what we call a tile excluder. So cartographic polygons are, are great for um, clipping out fixed areas of the globe. But tile excluders uh, provide more flexibility by allowing the user to programmatically tell Cesium for Unreal not to load um, certain, er certain tiles in the world at all. So it's used for a number of purposes. A really common one is putting the world on a tabletop, like you see here. So this, this is actually a, uh, a level from the Cesium for Unreal samples project. Um, and it lets you sort of pan through the, through the globe. That's, that's a tiny, tiny slice of the world, but the whole world is there, and you can move the world through that little spot. Um, so starting with the samples project, I just added that fancy looking table. That was my contribution here. Um, <laughs> All right, so next up, um, metadata styling. So to use, uh, to use this feature, which I'll, I'll show you in a moment, um, basically what you do is you add the CCM features metadata component, which you can see in the UI here. Um, and it lets us add meta, uh, take a tile set like CCM OSM buildings that has metadata embedded in it. And using this component, uh, CCM for Unreal will generate a skeleton material layer um, to obtain at runtime uh, the metadata properties that we designate. And then we can add custom nodes to a custom material, um, or, to, or to the generated material, to use those properties however we see fit. And with that, we can produce some, some pretty cool um, metadata-driven visualizations. So here we have um, buildings in the CCM OSM buildings data set that are shaded according to a property that's associated with each building. Here's another example of applying a, a glowing effect to pipes with a with a length that lies within a particular range. And that range can be specified at runtime on the visualization response instantly. So this is another, uh, another example from the CCM front rail samples project that you can play with yourself quite easily. Another major feature is support for 3D tiles point clouds. Um, Unreal Engine itself has uh, support built in for, uh, for point clouds via its LiDAR plugin. Um, but with CCM front rail and the 3D tiles hierarchical level of detail system, um, truly massive point clouds can be streamed into your application on demand. So here's an example of a point cloud that's rendered with attenuation, which helps the point cloud look less sparse um, by sort of rendering low detail tiles with larger points. Now, I love when, when new capabilities build on each other, right? Um, so, you know, it's, it's great because uh, you end up with something that's more valuable than some of its parts. So, here, we're using the previously mentioned metadata styling system to set the color of individual points um, that don't have any inherent color to begin with based on metadata properties of those points, now specifically the classification property in this case. Another feature recently was that we added support for mesh instances. Um, so instancing is where you take a single model, um, perhaps it's something like a model of a tree or a model of a light fixture, and we place or instance it at a large number of different locations. Each instance uh, may have its own rotation and scale, as well as its own metadata properties. And the, the really important part of this is that that very large number of similar instances is rendered really efficiently. Now, most people using CCM for Unreal are using it to visualize Earth. Uh, but it turns out not all. So um, that's why we recently added support for uh, custom ellipsoids in CCM for Unreal. Um, with custom ellipsoids, you can bring in an accurate model of other places in the solar system. Um, so perhaps using cesium moon terrain, like you see here. All right, this is a this is a super commonly requested feature um, from from our community for a, for a little while. Um, even in the original cesium for Unreal version 1.0, it was possible to put things on the terrain surface um, either by doing a line trace against the terrain, or perhaps by using Unreal's gravity system. Just create a character, and you can it'll fall to the earth and hit it, and it'll stop. Right? The problem was uh, the terrain sur surface at any given location, by design, changes based on the camera viewpoint. That's the whole idea with 3D tiles. Right? Um, it may even it can it can change, or it can even disappear if you turn your back on the terrain. We don't render what's behind you because you can't see it. Why would we render it? Right? <coughs> so that causes a problem if you are trying to put something that's on the surface back there because it'll just fall right through. Okay, so in a recent release, we had, had the ability to directly query the height of the terrain at a particular point, whether it's loaded or not. So just give me the most, most accurate representation, representation of what the height is at this point on the surface. So in this screenshot, uh, you can see that we've, we have a simple grid of trees that we've placed on terrain, and they, they all follow the surface nicely. 
Okay, this one I think is, is really cool because uh, this was actually a contribution by a member of the, our community. So it was written by someone that's outside of CCM and Bentley. Um, so runtime virtual texturing um, allows 3D tile sets to be rendered to a runtime virtual texture, which can then be used to shade other objects, including other tile sets in the scene. So a common use case for this is to render a tile set with um, the satellite imagery, like you see on the right here, um, of, of uh, so, sorry, you, <laughs> you render a tile set with satellite imagery to the runtime virtual texture, and then you use that texture to, uh, to shade the roofs of another tile set, like one that doesn't inherently have textures like cesium OS and buildings. So we're sort of splatting one tile set onto the surface of another one, right? And this gives us, uh, especially for a tile set like cesium OS and buildings, which uses additive refinement, technical details, but the point is uh, it gives us much sharper textures, like you see on the right here, compared to other approaches like using a raster overlay. Um, and you can do some pretty fancy techniques with that. Again, uh, I hope you all got to see Steven's talk yesterday, because uh, it, was, it was good and talked about some cool stuff with this. If you didn't, maybe try to catch the recording. Hopefully we have recordings of that. <laughs> All right, and finally, a uh, seemingly small but valuable one, we add a added a Blueprint API that makes it easy to use the CCMI and GeoCoder. Um, so with this, you can, for example, allow your users to type in the name of a, a place or a landmark or an address um, and fly the camera directly to it. All right, so what's next? Covers just a few of the more recent highlights. Um, yeah, the, team, the team's growing now. We actually have a lot more planned. So in an upcoming release, we're planning to add support for loading and rendering vector data. Uh, points, lines, and polygons, especially. Um, so we've started with the GeoJSON file format, um, but we plan to expand to other formats over time. We're initially targeting the common scenario that you can see in the screenshot here, where the vector data features are kind of draped over the terrain surface. Um, we do plan to support sort of more fleet free floating features in the uh, in the future, but this is a really common scenario, right? Where you we have line work that you want to want to be nicely placed on the surface without fighting with the surface, without depth fighting, like losing bits of the line as you zoom in and out. Uh, so this feature is actually being developed in the open, uh, as our features almost always are, um, in our public GitHub repositories. Um, there are open pull requests that implement this today, and it's something you can try out immediately. We expect to have this released um, pretty soon. Now you may have seen Gabby's talk earlier in this in this room uh, about adding uh, voxel support to CCMJS, um, and I'm excited to say that we're we're planning to bring support for 3D tiles voxels to CCM for Unreal as well. Voxels are especially useful for subsurface and underwater volumetrics. Um, so, like the vector data capability, voxel supports well underway. We have open pull requests for it, and it's something you can try out today. It'll be officially available soon. <laughs> A little bit further out than those two, we're planning to add support for Gaussian splats. Um, so uh, you would have seen that during the keynote this morning. Um, you know, we think it's a, a super exciting new rendering technique that's especially effective um, for you know, sort of fine geometry like wires that you can see here. Um, so this screenshot is from CCMJS, where the support is already implemented. Um, but we do plan to implement this in CCM for real, uh, real soon. Um, and you're, you're going to hear more about Gaussian splats. Uh, uh, not the next talk, but the one after in this room. All right, so overall, the goal is to give our users the best tools for creating uh, compelling visualizations of the built and natural environment, right? Uh, so this screenshot that you see here is from an upcoming Bentley product called Advanced Visualization. Um, some, some note is carrot. Um, we're starting to bring some of the great features from that product into CCM for Unreal proper, into the sort of open source code base. Um, for example, to make it easy to decorate the scene with people and construction equipment. Um, and you know, overall, to, to show how a real world scene, like a construction site that you see here, uh, actually changes over time. Right? All right, so uh, yeah, um, thank, thank you for listening. I've, I've included some contact information for myself here, um, as well as some links to some useful content. Um, just in case you're not already familiar with these, um, you know, I, I really encourage everyone to check out the community forum, which is the top link right there, community.ccm.com. Um, if you're not already familiar with it, my team and I, uh, we, 
we read every response or every message that's posted there. Um, we try to answer every question. Um, you know, sometimes it takes us a few days, but we really, we really try to stay on it. And so that's a, that's a great resource to talk directly to the developers and get your questions answered. Um, you know, we're, of course, happy to answer questions, but we love it even more uh, when you share what you're working on uh, and when you actually share your expertise with others. So when you try to pitch in and help other, answer other people's questions as well, that's amazing. Um, so, of course, I want to mention our extensive set of tutorials, um, ccm.com slash learn, if you're using CCM for real at all. Hopefully, if you're using that already. Uh, and finally, the, the GitHub repo. Um, so that's where the actual development happens. That isn't just a mirror of our internal development process. That is literally where we do the development. Um, and that's a great place to sort of, you know, upvote issues that are important to you and try out uh, new features before they're officially available. Um, and, yeah, best of all, at least from my perspective, is that uh, you can, on that GIP repo, you can, you can dive in yourself and you can help make CCM for Unreal better. Because it is open source and we welcome contributions. So, who has the first question? Cool. <laughs>